Hey everybody, this is Al Nash from the Direction New Empowerment Dynasty and you're listening to the Unapologetic Women podcast, the show for female leaders who love to live their legacies unleashed, unlimited and unafraid. If this is a community you would like to be a part of, visit directionnew.co forward slash unapologetic. Today, we're talking about magnetic confidence in communication with my good friend, Tina Bakehouse. Protecting audiences from boring speakers and speeches, Tina started her own company to provide speaking and storytelling consulting and coaching to help heart-centered leaders and organizations communicate more effectively. With more than 20 years of teaching communication and theater, a former Disney cast member and TEDx speaker and coach, Tina is passionate about educating others to become more self-aware and enhance their speaker style. Tina continues to use her creativity, leadership and passion for the arts to help people communicate effectively and solve problems. Tina lives at Maple Edge Farm, a 150-year-old family farm in southwest Iowa with her husband John and son Anderson and her beloved goats. Thanks so much for joining us. This is Tina Bakehouse. Tina, you, you're one of those women that from the very first time we had a conversation, it was just fun and shenanigans and high vibe fuckery. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> that just came out because um, it was just this connection of, of two women coming together without anything to prove and, and no impressions to be made or and I just instantly felt you were just being unapologetically Tina mm. and I could allow myself to then be unapologetically Al in your space as well mm. what does it mean for you to be an unapologetic woman well, when, when you first approached me with that word and said, I'd, I'd like your definition, I've been marinating on it. I asked my son what it meant in his perspective when he's 12. And he's like, well, mom, you just, you can't be sorry for something. And I thought, okay, that's simplistic, but there, that, there's that word sorry. And I feel like we hear it too much to where it's become deactivated, desensitized. And I started to play with this word unapologetic and, you know, without regrets came to mind, but it's just, it's just being for me. And it's without any question with full groundedness, with full energy, with full force. And to me, that is being unapologetic. I love that. And it's interesting that your son said not being sorry, because uh, we had this in one of the previous interviews, the sorry culture that we have been raised in to consistently and continuously apologize for everything and anything, especially as women, to the point of me coming to the realization I was apologizing for taking up space in the world. Um, yes. so when your son says that, you know, not being sorry, it's about almost not apologizing for who I am and my right to have space in this world and my right to have a voice and allowing you to have the same. For me, it's always about whatever I gift myself is allowing others to receive that similar gift in my space. I don't need to agree with everything. We get to have different values, different experiences. And I still get to celebrate your unapologetic self and appreciate that without me needing to conform to that or having you conform to me. I like the word celebrate when you brought that up when it comes to being unapologetic, right? That's such a positive view because I have noticed with so many of whether they're family or friends, the apologizing for any small things. For example, inviting somebody to my house and then they apologize back to me. I mean, just a simple exchange. I invite you for a thing, super excited to have you. And then they find a reason, well, well, I'm so, I'm so sorry. Like, is it okay if I come early or I have to leave early or whatever? And I think even just the smallest of small things. But I also love that, uh, acknowledging the who that you are and allow being in that 
allowing. So if I'm unapologetic, I feel as though I will empower other people to be unapologetic as well. Absolutely. And isn't that what the world is really so bursting and ready for is for the appreciation of diversity again, which we seem to have lost a little bit. Um, and even I find a lot of the times when people are preaching diversity, it's still not allowing for the other people because they're not thinking the same as them, which is, yes, another conversation altogether. But it is that not apologizing for myself any longer and mm. not apologizing for me for taking up space in this world. And it took and my me- ideas taking up space. Yes. Yes, my ideas taking up space, my my differentness taking up space, my different form of work taking up space, allowing myself to say what I think um, without attachment to it of not needing applause or approval from other people because it's just my yes. thoughts. You know, I don't need you to think my thoughts with me. <laughs> it's just I'm just sharing right. my thoughts with you without needing anything from that. And not, again, not being needy about it, not needing the affirmation that it's only a good idea if those conditions make it, uh, I I think, a a very apologizing world. And it took me a long time to get there. (laughs) Well, don't get me wrong. It's a journey because I do feel, especially I live in a rural community where being a woman who's unapologetic, who's quirky and a creative in on a farm doing her own thing, making her own business happen. And it's, it's unusual. And so I've had to just own it, be excited about it. And slowly the, the support is trickling in because it's like, oh, two years later, she's still unapologetic. She's still quirky and creative and she's got a big heart and here. Yes. What did it take for you though, to get to that? Oh, I'm, I'm going to be quirky self even in the most unlikely places or were you just always like this were you just always unapologetic well I think by and large I've been unapologetic but I've had my moments right Uh, so I grew up as this quirky kid that was very much in love with the Muppets and so I love Jim Henson all things creative so my front porch on the farm growing up was a proscenium stage and I would do shows and would read and teach my younger siblings how to, to, to act and be and do radio talk shows. And that just translated into all things in K through 12 education, college and beyond. And even in every job, I would just show up and I couldn't help but bring in my theater degree because I do have a background in theater. And having the improvisation training, I think, is supporting and supportive theater instructors that really broke down the, you know, the inside, having the inside come out. And those rules of improv of being fully present and making your partner look good in terms of I feel like I'm a partner with myself, making me feel and look good. Uh, I, I translated into professional world now. What was interesting to me, I was unapologetic throughout my time as a high school English speech and theater teacher, as a as a communication studies professor when I transferred into that higher education world, in the nonprofit world, and in a, a professional for-profit world. So all those jobs. Then when I went to open and do my own business, that was when the rawness came out of oh, I'm handing my business card out now. It has my name with my business, my logo, me. And I'm not representing anybody but me. And that became very naked. Now, don't get me wrong. I love being nude now and again. (laughs) Drinking in the water, frolicking playfully. I mean, and I, with the theater degree, I had people changing my clothes all the time as a different actor, whatever. But all of a sudden, all the things came forth. And I think for me, I I went through a year long, really deep dive, holistic certification and business coaching program that was very helpful for me, where I did a 30 day Facebook live challenge. And it really brought to my attention that it comes from the heart, everything. I know I'm a heart centered person. And that translates into the energy that you put forth 
then the mindset, and then you can strategize moving forward. And I, I was very much going back to it's all along, kind of like Dorothy from the Wizard of Oz. It's been inside of me all along, being intrinsically motivated. That's what it is. It's like, a, and, and it was that experience of the 30 days actually of getting in front of the camera, no matter what, that it was a metamorphosis, like a butterfly. And I know we love our butterflies Absolutely. and that it just, oh, it it's, it's here. It's inside. And when it's inside and you don't, and you just be right, you don't feel compelled to get the approval, to get all of that, um, all that, you know, the, the, the distraction, the, the chatter that can really make you feel this big, this small. I have a big personality, big heart. And I just decide my big personality, my big heart, that is why I am here. And it's the we, the we-ness. If we stand rooted and grounded in, in the we, then you just be. It is interesting for me that nobody else has ever mentioned that moment of crisis when we start our own businesses of, oh my God, I now have to sell the greatness of me. Yes, that's what it was. And how so many of us were really successful in corporates and we're really smart women we have our shit together, we know <laughs> how to do this, but nobody really prepares us for that moment of, oh, I have to sell me my my and and blow my own horn when yes. when we kind of feel I, I was just on a call with somebody and, and we were talking about her son's beautiful gifts and how for him is like he doesn't recognize it and I said to her but do any of us really recognize our gifts because I know for me whenever somebody says oh you're so good at this or that I go it's, it's just natural natural yeah. it's just intuitive it's just who I am mm -hmm. when, you, when you come from that space and all of a sudden now you have to go to the world and go oh and by the way I'm really great at this like nobody prepares us for that moment Oh, they don't do that. Well, and I will say what's interesting though is when I let go of the cell and really said it's a service, right? There's a difference in that mindset and that heart-centered focus and communication. It changed everything. It changed how I just got off the phone with a client, uh, and and I work with men and women and and all lines of it, all lines of work, and I unapologetically unapologetically ask for the money and high levels, right? That a couple years ago, I would have cringed like, how could I ask for that? And a lot of it is feeling rooted in those strengths. And, you know, uh, and when it does feel natural, true, and intuitive to us, it's like, that's when I identify, oh, that's the thing mm. where I understand temperament, and that everybody beats to a drummer that is their own. And so if you're speaking, I just had a conversation this morning with a really wonderful client who's this high level uh, leader in a company and her VP, the two of them are having conversations and they speak a foreign language to each other. And I was able to identify like one is much more sequential and much more needing the concrete, the other a lot more abstract and a lot more random with big ideas. So those are two, you know, so when I saw the solution start to happen, like you, it's not that I pat myself on the back and say, oh, I know all the things I'm good at, but it is when someone says it, it's like, oh, that helps me identify. So then I can be out there in the world communicating about the gifts that I'm happy to support people in their messaging people in their on their journey i always see it as as two things it's a sacred exchange and a sacred contribution mm. um, and the way that i see it is the sacred exchange is the exchange is money because that's just the way that we have developed the world at the moment but it's sacred so the greater the exchange the greater the receptivity of my client 
that's really it's it's not about the money it's about the container that they create for themselves and the sacred contribution is understanding that we are all in this together and we each have different gifts with which we are evolving the world and making the world a beautiful place and my contribution is what's required for my client to really make their next level of contribution and if i withhold that from them i'm doing them a disservice because it's like mm, it's a missing piece to their puzzle just like they're mm -hmm. actually a piece to my puzzle and when we can just start getting over that and understand it's all sacred contribution that's being made through our businesses because we each have a talent that's a piece to a puzzle to somebody else's puzzle let's build puzzles people like let's build puzzles let's have a puzzle building party i mean and i love that word sacred right it, it that was my aha moment too an epiphany that it's sacred selling or it's sacred the gifts that we have are sacred and to be able to share that sacred and i love that you you labeled it as contribution because everyone has a gift and a talent and i think what crushes people's spirit is when they're told with the very thing that they love to do and maybe they had a coach or a teacher or a parent or someone in their lives say, well, you can't do that or, well, that's not important. So either they put the value and aligned their value of the thing they love doing and they were good at based on what someone else had said to where that hurt them, or they were told they couldn't and then they stopped or it wasn't good enough. And it's that enoughness, right? It, it's, it's the value that we place on ourselves. Absolutely. And that is your gift is, is the whole speaking thing. Now, this is really interesting for me because I believe that we are living in a time when especially women get to reclaim their voices. But there's work to be done first. There is healing to be done from where to really powerfully use our voices to uplift and, and um, inspire rather than breaking down, which is what we see a lot of the time. And you have a gift in actually helping people connect to that magnetic, unapologetic voice within themselves. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, my I believe the world needs effective communication and your audience has two choices. They can either, because all, all communication is persuasive, they can choose to tune you out or they can choose to listen. And, and with my clients, I want them to listen to you for you have something worth sharing we're speaking about. And I, my, my journey with uh, the journey that we have together is this anchoring in the magnetic confidence that you have. Everybody has that ability. And I think a lot of it starts and stems from, you know, not desiring being called a storyteller or being called a speaker. I mean, I even found myself, I'm working on a book that I kept writing, calling it a writing project. Well, it's because it puts some weight and accountability and heftiness to it right so a lot of the work I do with my clients is is first identifying that yes there is that a magnetic speaker within you and she he they need to come out and come forth and identifying that authentic speaker voice and up leveling it because if you're here a lot of that is based on the conditioned self versus the authentic self. We have conditioned beliefs that we can sneak into fear. We can sneak into negative thinking. We can sneak into judgment. We can sneak into thinking small. And all of that is conditioned based on, you know, an experience that maybe we had that was part of our script. And so it's getting into that metacognition, the thinking about our thinking, which I don't like to spend too much here. I like to spend a lot more time here in the heart, but it's identifying, letting go of the fear, leaning into faith. And it's faith, like that whole faith fall. I don't know if you've ever done that where you're in a team building activity, right? I was always that precocious kid or young adult as in a professional world where I would say, I'll do it, step there, fall back. And one time they didn't get me very well and I fell on the floor and I thought, well, that happened. <laughs> but I had this full blown force of faith, you know, in myself that, I will carry me if they can't carry me. And I think that's the first piece is that you can carry you. 
as the speaker. And I really help with that, with understanding your temperament, understanding, are you in your conditioned self? How do you identify that and transform that energy into the presence and state of being that you desire? And the poise is the work, the, the, the work that we do together with the voice and the body. But the message making is sometimes where people get tripped out. They're not sure how to craft content and to do so with confidence and clarity. It's like, well, I don't even have a story, a lot of, of clients will say. And what I have found is that it's it's a it's like being a miner. You're mining and sifting through stories. So you go into the cave and you've got a bundle of gold there. There's so much gold. You have experiences from childhood and memories that we could learn from lessons. You have so much from your work experience, personal life, et cetera, that are worth sharing. But we think that we have to climb Mount Kilimanjaro for it to be this big, beautiful story. But really getting lost in a parking lot and learning the, the kindness of a stranger can be a beautiful story just as well. It's how it's told. So it's getting that understanding of structure. So it's first understanding the self that we are, the structure, and then being able to deliver it as the authentic self that we are. That's the journey in my magnetic speaker blueprint program that I work with heart-centered leaders. I love that. On the side, how do people get to know more about that blueprint? How do they get to work with you if that this is speaking to them right now? Yeah, they can check out my website, tinabakehouse.com. That's Tina, T-I-N-A, Bakehouse, B as in boy, A-K-E-H-O-U-S-E dot com. And they can reach out to me via email and get on my wonderful newsletter. I have a lot of little beautiful nuggets I share. Uh, they also can contact me through LinkedIn, Tina Bakehouse. They can message me that way and say, hey, I would love to learn more. Big part with me is I am all about individualizing. If you do an individual program, I meet you where you are. And it could be like a client I talked to today. It's like, oh, crud, I have a keynote in December. And I'm like, uh, have you started it? Sort of. Okay, we better get hit the road, Jack, here. I can do those kinds of SOS kinds of experiences where it's like, I got to get a product out quickly and I want to communicate effectively. Or it could be like another person I'm going to be working with, which is a longer program where I have a big project, a big idea that community needs buy-in and I'm not confident about it. And I don't know how to convey that. So depending on the nature of where you are, or you just want to get good at Facebook and LinkedIn lives, worked with those kind with people like that. So it's an individualized program. I also work with corporate uh, teams in terms of how do we, through webinars and workshops, how do we show up and appreciate ourselves, share our stories in a meaningful way? So tinabakehouse.com or check out and connect with me on LinkedIn. Love that. Now, one of the things that I actually do want to spin off a little bit is you were talking about harvesting the gold. And this is really interesting because I had this conversation with a friend last week and we were on the call and she was going, um, her coach has got her looking into this new model and, you know, it's her way of making sense of the world. And I was like, but honey, when last have you taken a wisdom like audit of your life? Mm. Like, what are you talking about? And I was like, when last have you sat down and really had a look at your life and taken everything that's happened during your lifetime and harvested the wisdom from that, harvested what you have learned from that? And so I want the, our listeners to actually maybe do this exercise for themselves, not because you need to be a speaker, but I believe that we are, we're losing so much wisdom in the world because mm. rather than continuously learning things from other people, we, we get to harvest gold from our own lives, which mm. is what the world really needs right now is, is learned wisdom. It's lived wisdom. Um, I love the audit, the wisdom audit. And then that's empowering, right? Where you might say, oh my goodness, I actually shared more stories, presented more, communicated more. I have more than I ever thought before. And it makes me think of an activity I did last week that was in powerful in this workshop. And we had to do a fingerprint and we all have different fingerprints that we place into the world, just like every snowflake is different. And on a sidebar, when I was going into teaching, my fingerprints failed seven times in the education system and the police station realized that my prints are unprintable. So that's just a fun little side note because they're 
you know, that that's genetic interesting. I could go do something crazy, a shenanigan, if you will. But I, re I bring that up in that your print is special and it's your signature print, it's your signature style. And what I think too many times I've found we want to be someone we're not. Oh, I want to be more like Brene Brown or Elizabeth Gilbert or Tony Robinson or whomever, right? These people that have been out there in the world, getting the attention, the accolades for the things they're saying and doing and speaking. But at the end of the day, we want you. We want your print in the world. We want you to mine through the gold and you to share that gold. So on a side note, I, I hope no, but no cops are listening. But we <laughs> <are> kind of <laughs> together because I don't have printable fingerprints either because I had <gasps> eczema as a child and all the cortisone that I had to use screwed up my fingerprints. So we what? right. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. I feel like we're even more connected now oh, in this no. hour. I love it so much. Complete random shenanigans that could get us into <laughs> on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> and how fabulous is that? I love that. I, you know, I'm about to release my book on greatness. And one of the key messages that I want to get through to people is we have to let go of the socialized idea of what greatness looks like what the fingerprint should look like for you to be authentically great and rather to discover what your fingerprint is, what your greatness is. And I love that exercise that you did of we need your fingerprints in the world because I think a lot of people put their fingerprints and then they kind of wipe them out because they make them irrelevant. They kind of go, oh, no, that doesn't look like everybody else's fingerprint or how I think a fingerprint should look. So let me just wipe that mm. out and, or go in with a fine pen and, and try and make the fingerprint look like, you know, the people that society have put on the pedestal. And, well, actually, no, every fingerprint counts. Like every fingerprint counts because that if you weren't important you wouldn't be alive today like if you weren't that mm. important to the experience of life on earth you wouldn't be here like your fingerprint mm -hmm. is that important what a beautiful exercise oh it, it was and it it just warmed my heart but also gave me little tingles and I thought well yeah this does matter and I think it's that whole idea of when you recognize that you are a very unique individual and that something matters to you, like it matters to you, then you can invite it to matter to other people. How beautiful is that? Or not, right? Or not. Like it depends, right? But you can decide if something matters to you that you're speaking about. The beautiful piece is when you're going out there into the world and you want to share it it's, it can be an invitation and you just, you have to be okay that some audience members may say, no, no, thank you. But if it matters to you in your own unique style and you put it out into the world, it's making peace with, it matters to you. And that is enough. And that's the only way that other people can feel that resonance and go, oh yeah, that matters to me too. Let's bring our collaborative energetic forces together and turn what matters to us into physical matter, right? AKA manifestation. Mm -hmm. So then again, it's like we're not here on our own. We're all in this together. And we are all here to collaborate with whatever really matters to us because it matters. It matters. Period. It matters. Yes. I love that. I love the word matter. I love playing with that word. Turning what matters mm. to me into physical matter, AKA the process of manifestation. Um, mm. And I think a lot of people don't always mm, marinate into the juiciness of words that are available to us and the meaning that's available in that, and then bringing that into their speech as well, because you have to first connect to the power of the words. This is my opinion. When we connect to the power of the words, we can speak more magnetically because we're using the power of the right words. Um, but I'm yes. not sure that you are. So what is your take on that? Connect to the power of the words? Yes, before you speak. Yeah. 
it means if it means nothing to you or if it only means have halvesies or I'm only half in, like I'm just tip, tipping my toe into the water, into the idea, then that's exactly what is getting out there as far as energy. And so I've, I've witnessed this full force where whether it was a speaker who was not fully engaged with the message, not fully practiced, like didn't believe it, you're going to feel that. And so it's having that intention, being intentional of this matters to me coming from here. And because I'm coming from here, I'm going to show it from here and from here. So vocally and physically and all the things, I mean, it's doing the work ahead of time and, if, and choosing to show up in that being, because when you connect to the idea you can change the world. You have to connect to the idea. If you're not connected, it's like an actual magnet, right? When you put an element there that has nothing, you know, it, it would just not stick. But it, there are certain components or elements that connect. And it's just, it, 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 I've seen this time and time again. When you connect to the idea, the message, it pours out. And then, then you, the speaker, experience flow and your audience becomes part of this dance of conversation and it becomes a beautiful experience. Dance of conversation. Oh, we need- Let's tango, well, baby. <laughs> oh, we so need more of that in the world. The dance of conversation, the passion in the dance. Yes. The letting go, but from trust allowing yourself to be guided and then guiding it is that beautiful harmonious coming together for the sake of creating something even more beautiful right if you've seen dancers that's exactly right where they sweep the floor but there's a give and take and a, a leading and a guiding and a feeling and I remember taking dance lessons and really you I, I had to be blindfolded initially and you had to feel the bodies and the music and it was just getting in sync and when you're in sync the dance happens I love that what do you take an unapologetic stand for in the world being a creative artist the arts matter to me I absolutely, it doesn't matter if you're in the city, but particularly here in rural Midwest in the United States, it's very hard to get the arts out there and to get support for bands and music and performance arts. And whether you're a little kiddo who just desperately wants to learn how to play the trumpet, you should have that. I would love that opportunity, you know, and having that support or getting access to theater education and improv to build in that confidence. I've coached and was able to coach teens telling their stories and getting to witness the impact that, that made on them, but bigger impact in the audience. The arts matter. They need, we need, what the world needs now is love and the arts. <laughs> That's very, very aligned with my message. I always talk about living as the artist and understanding that your entire life is a piece of art. And everything that you do, you can do as an artist, bringing reverence to what it is that you're doing, practicing, bringing dedication, um, bringing discipline to your art form, your life as the art form. Because what I'm finding is right now, the world, what they need from the arts is the creativity, the love, the passion, the feeling that art creates in us. We've created a very mind-driven, analytical, information-processed type of world, which is great. It, get, it got us to where we are, but that needs to now be grounded through emotion. And when I started looking at so many of our great artists passing on to, you know, from this realm, I was like, oh, we need to start paying attention to that. They're making an exit for a reason because the next artists need to step forward. The next artists need to start beating the drum. The next artists need to find their voices. And it's interesting because I'm having this conversation so much in that creativity seems to be lost 
in so many of the arts even at the moment mm. in this regurgitation of even movies like come on guys where's the originality captivate yeah. me expand my mind again I feel like I'm watching the same movie over and over and over Groundhog again. Day yes. and that's art art is courageous art is breaking the boundaries art is doing it differently so that being okay with failure being okay with failure because there is no failure right there's only right but people label failure right being okay with people not loving your art because as long as you are, are being authentic and every day just creating that's what the world needs we need original creative artists breathing their art again being obsessive we are the obsessive artists in our world Can we well get- and on top of that it's art and creativity that I feel like solves more problems than ever before it's thinking differently and yes. ver- from various perspectives and I mean sort of for example I did egg arts camps here on the farm teaching people where their food comes from using and collaborating with visual and performing artists and, uh, you know, having kiddos and families perform and paint and and use soil from our, our land to create pots. But yes, it's that whole idea of how can we, as the humans that we are, we're meant to create. All of us, and I, you know, when someone says, oh, I'm not creative, I'm like, hogwash. Everyone is creative. It's just differing ways. Even if you're the most mathematical accountant to me, math is very creative. It's It's a sentence structure. My mind is much more language oriented, but my son, he loves a mathematical equation and he believes everything is math from golf to life. And he's very creative about it. And so it, it's a matter of how we frame it and use it. Bring back art, baby. Bring back the art of living. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, goodness, Tina, this has been amazing. As always, the time just feels so short because I could carry on and on for days with you and we'll get on (laughs) after this. (laughs) Shenanigans, bring them on, please. We have no fingerprints. (laughs) We'll be like Pinky and the Brain. It's like, how are we going to rule the world tonight? (laughs) (laughs) I love it. Too much fun. To all our listeners, my recommendation is connect with Tina. Like, seriously, why wouldn't you? She is one of the most dynamic, magnetic, vibrant women that I have met in a really, really long time. I'm so blessed to know you. I'm so grateful Mm. that life decided to bring us together and to cross our paths, even though we're on different sides of the world. How amazing. Bless technology for this as well. Um, and thank you for your generous sharing of your wisdom. Um, thank you to all the listeners for staying with us. And we look forward to another conversation next week. So until then, let's live our legacies unleashed, unlimited and unafraid. Thanks so much.